Space Chronicles in partnership with the European Space Agency. The wide open spaces of the frozen north are slowly beginning to melt. Global warming is driving back the ice cap, fueled in part by human activity. The polar bear has become both a symbol and a victim of the process of climate change. If the polar bear disappears, we will have food, we will have medicine, we will be wealthy in Europe, I am sure. Uh, but uh, we are also much poorer in that this beautiful and important ecosystem disappears. Um, it is a value issue. Should we have it or should we not? Kim Holman has a portrait of national hero Roald Amundsen on the wall of his office at the Norwegian Polar Institute in the northern town of Tromsø. Amundsen is best known for beating Scott to the South Pole, but he was also the first to sail the Northwest Passage in 1905. The adventurer battled against frozen sea ice in the summer of that year. But climate models suggest that within a few decades, that route could become more than just a myth. The climate models uh, that uh, we use to uh, learn about what the future climate uh, may be tell us that the Arctic will warm faster and more than any other part of the Earth. Uh, that will lead to melting of the ice, and in particular the summer ice will uh, disappear quite rapidly indeed. So by 2050 we expect, uh, certainly we expect the summer ice to be gone, maybe earlier. This model from the Max Planck Institute for Meteorology in Hamburg shows how summer sea ice is disappearing at an accelerating rate. Satellites are a precious tool for climate modelling. ESA's two ERS European remote sensing satellites have been carrying out valuable work studying the ice cap since the early 1990s. In 2002, Envisat was launched with nine Earth observation instruments on board. It means the level of ice is being constantly monitored. Every 90 minutes, a satellite on a polar orbit sweeps over Tromsø. This base is a key installation for sending and receiving data. Today we handle between 200 and 300 orbit passes per day, covering approximately 20 to 25 satellites. One of the satellites we receive data from is the Envisat satellite from ESA, the European Space Agency. And this is used extensively both in Tromsø and in the world to monitor sea ice conditions. Uh, for example, the Norwegian Polar Institute and the Meteorological Institute in, in Tromsø receive the satellite images from us. Helga Tangen is one of those digesting the daily supply of data from Envisat and others. Rudy, a towering bear from the frozen archipelago of Svalbard, guards the entrance to the Norwegian Meteorological Institute. Approximately 90% of the input to a global weather model is now from satellite data. And this uh, means, of course, that uh, we are uh, dependent on the satellite data. Traditionally, in the meteorological society, we use optical uh, instruments and satellites. But lately, in the last few years, we've also been using uh, radar satellites from Envisat and from uh, Radarsat. And these are especially important for describing in details the sea ice. These scientists have watched the Arctic ice cap recede before their very eyes. This year, uh, for the Euro on the European Arctic side, it's, uh, where it's um, far north of Svalbard, which is seldom in January. The satellites give a clear picture of what's going on in the long term and on a day-to-day -day basis too. We use the image, the satellite image and the satellite information observations and the ground observations to make a forecast for the weather and wind at sea between Svalbard and Norway and Greenland. Mm -hmm. 
down at the docks, the fishermen of Tromsø are also facing the consequences of climate change. The process of warming means that herring stocks are to be found further to the north. Usually herring fishery was going on down here uh, three, four years ago, but no, in, uh, this year it was going on up here due to the change of temperature in, in the sea. Tromsø's port director is a former sea captain. He doesn't see the process of global warming as all bad. I think the, uh, as a result of the melting of ice, you will, the, the Northwest Passage will be open for commercial traffic in a in, in few years. Uh, I think so. And, and the availability to the Northeast Passage will be also be better. Maybe you can avoid using icebreakers, and that will open up new possibilities for, for between uh, Europe and, and, and Far East, for example. You will shorten down the, the trip by at least uh, 14 days or three weeks, uh, comparing to now. The Northwest Passage goes from Europe along the northern coast of Canada, the Northeast Passage across the top of Russia. Both could become passable to commercial shipping within a matter of decades. But it will always be a tough environment and potentially very hazardous. Imagine a vessel carrying 1,000 passengers uh, hitting the ice, uh, then you have a catastrophe. New frozen ice is very difficult to see on, on radars, for example. And uh, to discover that ice, you, you need some information, especially from satellite. It will be very, very useful. What we need is, is the thickness of the ice. How thick it is. Is it danger or is it not danger? Because some of the vessels can go through ice without problem. But if the ice is uh, a meter thick, only 10 centimeters is above the sea level. The 90 centimetres is, is, uh, is below surface. Next year, the European Space Agency is launching Cryosat-2, a satellite that will offer precious information for maritime navigation in the Arctic region. The instruments on board will be able to offer very precise data on ice thickness. It's three in the afternoon in downtown Tromsø. Daylight is a scarce commodity in these northern climes. But the darkness means you can enjoy nature's light show. The interaction of charged particles from the sun with the Earth's magnetosphere gives us the aurora borealis. The northern lights aren't in danger of disappearing, but that other symbol of the Arctic, the polar bear, certainly is. These white giants that feed on the fat of bearded seals are dying out as the ice cap melts. Some predict their population could be reduced by two-thirds by 2050. Can anything be done? It will be difficult and it requires action soon, action now, and it requires quite a lot of work by all of us. Uh, there is still some time there are still polar bears there, but uh, it will require action and very much action soon, if not immediately. Man bears much of the blame for recent global warming and shoulders the responsibility to at least try to do something about it. Sophisticated Earth observation satellites are a vital monitoring tool as we seek to better understand and manage the changes going on around us.